Malta still has a relatively lower cost of living than many places around the world, including where I live in Costa Rica for part of the year. These and many more benefits of living in Malta, it's worth a deeper look to see how it might be a good fit for your European footprint. Keep watching. I'm going to outline some of the most popular expat places to live on the island. Bonjour! This is Kathleen Evans, international journalist and longtime contributor to International Living. My husband and I have been semi retired expats since 2013 and designed a life with a part time footprint in beautiful subtropical Malta. The Republic of Malta is a small group of three main islands in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea between Sicily to the north and the North African coast to the south. Malta, Gozo, and Camino are small at approximately 122 square miles total. However, their appeal is undeniable. With a population of only 535,000, nearly 30% of the residents are foreigners, creating a unique melting pot of culture, food, and traditions. The country has one international airport, Lua, and from the Americas, you only need one connection on the European continent. All the major airline partners fly here, as well as European discount carriers, such as Ryanair and EasyJet. Malta is the sunniest and southernmost location on the European continent. The climate offers mild Mediterranean winters, although it can get a little rainy, picture-perfect shoulder seasons in autumn and spring, and hot summers with temperatures that can soar well into the 90s Fahrenheit. Snow is very unusual in Malta. In fact, the last time it snowed was in 1962. The islands are no strangers to invasions. Although not rich in natural resources, Malta has a very strategic location in the Mediterranean Sea, as well as possessing Europe's deepest natural harbor. Due to these factors, Malta's history is fascinating, plus the many walled citadels and World War II caves and bunkers remain great for exploring history on this beautiful island. Malta was part of the British Empire and a protectorate for nearly 150 years. English is still an official language on the islands, making it easy to do business, read signage, fill out government forms, and general assimilation into life here. English is the common language throughout the expat community, even as a second language, so it is easy to fit in and easy to make friends immediately. Malta has several visa options, including the Nomad Residency Permit. However, attaining permanent residency as a third country national or a non-EU resident is fairly straightforward and can be accomplished on your own. It will allow you permanent residency, renewable every five years, and is recognized as EU residency. So you will not be hampered by the 90 days in, 90 days out Schengen rules. Although inflation has hit everywhere, Malta still has a relatively lower cost of living than many places around the world, including where I live in Costa Rica for part of the year. Expats can still live in the $2,000 to $2,500 range, depending on the kind of lifestyle you choose. And if you double that, you will be very comfortable in Malta. You will find healthcare in line with North American and EU standards. I had a recent health scare personally, 
and made a trip to the emergency room at the best private hospital, St. James. Here they had all the modern equipment and an English speaking staff. And my private international insurance covered everything after my deductible. With these and many more benefits of living in Malta, it's worth a deeper look to see how it might be a good fit for your European footprint. Keep watching. I'm going to outline some of the most popular expat places to live on the island. I'm going to talk about several of the popular places to live in the country of Malta, starting off first with Slima and St. Julian's. These are probably the most popular towns for expats, and it's actually where we live when we're in Malta. Now, Slima was once a quiet fishing village that has turned into a chic seaside town, uh, primarily during the British rule, and has continued to be, there, be so. The population of uh, Slima is 23,000, and you add another approximately 9,000 in St. Julian's. Now, the official name for Slima is Tas Slima, which means peace and comfort but it's really anything but peaceful. There are trendy shops, cafes, bars, uh, clubs. In fact, St. Julian's is known very well for its clubbing scene. Um, there's a nearly four mile strand and promenade all around the point. So if you could picture this as all seaside and there you'll find small parks and uh, an outside gym all along the seafront, little trendy cafes, and then on the other side, you'll see towering high-rise apartments. Uh, this area of the country is extremely dense. It is also some of the most expensive housing. You'll find that in St. Julian's, it's very similar. Um, this area is extremely popular for the ease of everything nearby. It's close proximity to Valletta, it's just a 15 uh, minute ferry ride there. And also the city buses run very frequently through both. So it's easy to get anywhere. You don't even necessarily need a car if you live there. Now I do want to mention for this area and all around Malta, there is something called an SDA or a special designated area. Now these areas are in tandem between de developers and the government of Malta and have made it extremely easy for foreigners to buy in these designated areas. Uh, they tend to be a little higher end and uh, these complexes allow you to buy and rent them out without restrictions. Um, and they are very big. For example, Fort Cambridge is in Slima and there are 350 units from one bedroom to four bedrooms within it. Now, if you buy in these areas, you do not need an AIP permit. That is an acquisition of immovable property. So you can buy anywhere in Malta, but you do have to, if you're not in an SDA, you have to get one of these special permits, which will add to the cost and to the time, but it's not possible. Now, I can't talk about Malta without talking about the capital, Valletta, which is the sunniest and the smallest capital in Europe. Now, real estate here does tend to be more expensive for a number of reasons. It is one of the first planned cities, planned back in the 16th century by the Knights, and um, the, the city is a giant walled city on a big peninsula. Uh, overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. The population of Valletta is just under 6,000 and it offers amazing views from everywhere on the peninsula. It also possesses the deepest water, natural water harbor in Europe. Now, real estate is limited as is land because you, you've got to remember they developed this in the 16th century so pretty much every piece of land is already developed within the walls of the city. 
Um, the expats that I talk to who live there love it because there's lots of activities going on. Uh, it's popular for tourists. It's a very big cruise stop if you're cruising the Mediterranean. It has some of the best restaurants in the country. So there's always something going on. There's theater. There's arts. Um, it is a very, very small city, so you don't even need a car. In fact, it's not really recommended. Um, it, there are very narrow streets and very hilly. Um, but there is this amazing concentration of history and historical sites all within the city, um, including Fort St. Elmo, which is on the tip of the peninsula. Uh, they have a fantastic war museum, the oldest theater in Europe, as well as a number of cathedrals. So great exploring for history. Um, all your basic needs can be met in the city if you live there. Uh, there are small clinics, there's pharmacies, there are cell phone stores, there are a number of small groceries, and one larger grocery store, albeit a little bit expensive. Uh, but if you're looking at doing major shopping or healthcare, you do have to leave the walled city. Um, everything is within a 10 or 15 minute drive. And the main bus, Termina bus, is just outside the city gates. So it's easy to get anywhere. Um, but it is good to note there are no SDAs or the special designated areas within the city of Florida. Now I'm going to take you to the quieter side of Malta, to a town and a region called Maliha. This is up in the north, very far away from the inner harbor area, but still on the seaside. The summer population there is well to about 11,000, although in the other seasons it gets a little quieter. It offers beautiful views because it's set up on a hill with this gorgeous cathedral at the top. And then there's windy roads that go down to the seaside. So you could actually live in Maliha proper with these mountain views uh, overlooking the sea, or you can live down by the seaside. Now it's very popular for families uh, because it is a little bit quieter and it has a real sand beach. It's in fact one of the biggest in Malta and it has very small waves because it is in a protected cove which is great for water sports and games and that sort of thing. Now there are three SDAs or special designated areas in Maliha. So it is popular for expats and foreigners to buy there. Uh, housing in general tends to be a little bit cheaper once you get away from the Inner Harbor area. And because it's in the north, it's a great launching point for the ferry that goes to the islands of Camino and Gozo which we'll be talking about in a minute. Also up there, you're more in the country, away from the density. So there are some great nature hikes. There are beautiful historical sites, including old watchtowers. So it's a, it's a great way and a place to kind of get away from the hustle and bustle. Now, as I mentioned, there are three main islands in Malta. And one of the popular expat places includes Gozo. Now, Gozo is the sister island to Malta, and it's just to the north, and it's only four and a half by nine miles, so it's very small, and the population of the island is approximately 40,000 people. Now, the folks that live there say it's like Malta was 50 years ago, so it's a much quieter pace. Uh, it's more natural. There's some countryside there and there's less development as well. Now, there are gorgeous nature hikes. There are caves to explore there. There are these gorgeous azure blue waters around the island and several sand beaches around the coast. Now, the ferry runs frequently all year round um, from North Malta to Gozo and it takes about 25 minutes. Uh, it's also pedestrian and car. So the capital is Victoria. That is the most populated. And it's only about 6,000 residents. 
So um, it, it is popular and the Citadella there or the big walled city, the original walled city is quite gorgeous to explore. Uh, it also uh, has popular beach communities all around Gozo. So expats live amongst all of them and it's up to you to find the right place that has the right personality for you. Now, everything you need to live is on the island of Gozo. So you've got your shopping, you've got pharmacies, you've got smaller healthcare, um, everything you really need. You don't have to have a car, it's nice to have one, but there is a public bus uh, that runs frequently. There is a hop on, hop off tourist bus. Uh, there's Uber and Bolt, which is very similar to Uber. Now for any major medical, you would need to go to the island of Malta. So that is something you need to keep in mind if you're looking to live on Gozo. If you have an emergency, it could become an issue. Now, real estate in general is cheaper uh, than living on Malta. And I have talked to expats who live there on 2,000 or less per month. Uh, but of course you can live a more extravagant lifestyle if you bump that up a little bit. Now, the last popular place I'm going to talk about is Rabat and Emdina. Now, this is an inland location in Malta. Uh, we've mo mostly been talking about seaside villages, um, but Emdina was actually the first capital of Malta and the best preserved walled city in all of Europe, tracing back 4,000 years. There have been several films and television uh, shows filmed there. Because it's so beautifully preserved, yeah, you may know uh, Game of Thrones. First season was filmed there as well as Gladiator 2. Um, it's very difficult to buy real estate in Medina. The population is only 245 people. Uh, so most of these villas behind the walls are passed down through the Maltese generations. However, that's not true for Rabat. And Rabat actually means suburb in Malta. And it is the suburb to Amdina with a population of about 11,000 people. It's also a very well-preserved town. And it's kind of the suburb where people lived, the commoners lived when they were taking care of the high society people that lived within the walls of Amdina. Now, I mentioned Rabat because it has approval and is building the very first special designated area, all right? So this part is, uh, this part of the country is close to wineries in Malta, and it's very close to the rugged west coast. Um, that is home to the Blue Grotto, uh, which is this gorgeous limestone arch that plunges into the Mediterranean and there's caves below it, and the water is, is very reminiscent of uh, Capri in, in Italy. Um, it's also home to the Dingley Cliffs, which is on the west coast, and it's uh, these gorgeous cliffs, again, right on the edge, created by Teutonic plates. And you can go there and have a little sundowner, enjoy some wine as you watch the sunset and look west, towards the coast of Africa. Now, th this, uh, this area offers beautiful views of the entire island because it was the first capital. They wanted to be at a high point overlooking where they might see invaders. Uh, it's also very quiet out in the Rabat area. There's less development. It's definitely uh, less, less expensive than some of the popular seaside villages. Uh, it also has charming winding streets uh, and your basic needs are going to be met there as well. Uh, and as I mentioned, real estate is generally cheaper than these seaside towns. Okay, so um, expats that live there also could live on 2500 a month and uh, also living there you're not far from everything even though it's inland. It's only 25 minutes to the airport, 25 minutes to Valletta, 
and 25 minutes to major health care. So it's a great alternative if you don't want to live on the sea, but still see the sea. Thank you for joining me, and if you like what you've heard, please subscribe to the International Living YouTube channel. Thank you.